In this one, we're going to do, um, we're going to see if we can come up with a resolution. And so just to remind ourselves, you know, I, I started off with, you know, the sort of progression where I said, we start with an issue and it might be, what if everyone was equal? And then, you know, we come up with the resolution, uh, which I have misplaced somewhere else. But anyway, <laughs> the resolution would be an emphatic statement that um, we would uh, be able to kind of argue about. Oh, there we go. I found it. Special people deserve special treatment. That could be a progression from the issue to the resolution. So we're going to try to come up with one of these. I'm going to leave that there as a sort of example. And the idea is hopefully we create something that's, um, that's quite emphatic and provocative, and it uh, creates lots of uh, conversation and dissent. So let's look at... Uh, special people. That's right. Well, that's right. If everyone was equal, we wouldn't need special people. Very true. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay. This is the first one. The first one is, is this deja vu or is this history repeating itself? Now to kind of get that little context, sometimes it's good to look at the sort of definitions of things or go to first principles. Now deja vu, I think we all kind of know what that means. But when I looked at this um, explanation of deja vu, which is probably hard to read on the screen, yes, it says that it's the feeling that one has lived through the present situation before, but they go into the sort of description of it as, as being like a faulty memory, basically saying, you know, this is where your brain has done something wrong. And uh, despite the strong sense of recollection, the time, place, and practical context of the experience, uh, it, it was, it, it's impossible for you to have had this experience before. So deja vu almost to me sounds like it's saying that, yes, you may have this feeling, but you are mistaken. So, so in this present moment, you can either argue, oh, it's deja vu, in which case, no, no, this is a black swan event. This has never happened before. So all of these sort of illusions you have to it being similar to the past, no, forget those. It's just a deja vu mismemory cognitive backfiring. Or you could say it is history repeating itself. That's how I think of this. But what 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 come what occurs to you when you think about it? That's interesting because my understanding of deja vu is 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 very much a kind of a, a micro moment where you kind of think, I'm sure I've experienced this before. Um, that's my understanding of what it means rather than it actually being about something repeating so i suppose that's the same thing but um rather than it being a kind of um uh, 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 yeah, a glitch in the matrix or um a a, a a a loop in time type thing or um history repeating itself in the idea of we haven't learned from history uh mm -hmm. so we're making the same mistakes again i've, I've never really thought of of deja vu in that way very i've only ever sort of thought of it as a, as a kind of uh, a disquieting sense that you've been here, you've seen this thing before in exactly this way. Um, so it's interesting. May, I, I, that's been my personal understanding of it. It's a deeply personal thing of an emotion in a way. You kind of go, whoa, that, that's a bit odd. Um, but it might be that, that other people use the term differently. So from a, from a meaning sense, um, I mean, do you mean it in a, in, when you say it, do you think of it in that sense of saying, we have been through this situation before historically, it's documented and it's happening again? Um, or do you think of it like a sort of a, a moment where you, you kind of, you, you'll, you'll see the sun shine through a car window on the street somewhere and think, oh, that, that, that's triggered a recollection. Well, how do you think? Of it? Well, I, I guess I, I bring this up a bit mischievously because deja vu to me is a bit like you describe. It's a feeling like, oh, wait, haven't I been here before? I haven't I done that before in this place? And then you realize that you couldn't have been because you've never been to this place before or whatever, and that this is a false memory. But I, I bring that up because it, it, you tell yourself it can't, it can't be, and other people would say, no, no, it can't be. So it's almost as if deja vu is really the brain playing tricks on you. 
And I bring it up mischievously in this context because a lot of people have said about this pandemic, oh, this is a black swan event. No one could have seen this coming. Uh, there's no way to prepare for this. Um, anything that looks like it's uh, familiar is not. You know, it's, it's all it's all entirely new. And and I feel that that is very uh, misleading, and that you know people say history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. And I think that's that makes sense to me that we. <laughs> We look for patterns. We're pattern animals, right? And so we do repeat ourselves because we're human. And throughout the ages, we we kind of admire how historically humans seem to be very much like humans today. There's there's a continuity of of weirdness and behavior there. Um, and so I also yeah, feel so that yeah. Go ahead. Well, only only um, the, the, to to sort of go with the go with the the. the um, response to, to a pandemic situation we've been through loads of pandemics you know I, th by the, you could use that argument to say well i've never driven in brighton before therefore i can't possibly understand how to drive in brighton before you know it's just like well the roads are different or you know or another country you know i've driven in the us i've driven in europe i've driven in thailand and, and, and asia um i remember the first time i drove in greece that was insane um and bearing in mind that in the uk we drive on the correct side of the road um, so <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> So going everywhere else and they're all wrong is quite weird, um, but uh, uh, but you you can do it. You know you get there and you know how because you've got patterns, as you said. You know we're good at those patterns. Um, we can recognise the patterns and we go well. Okay, um, this is how I will deal with this. The same thing applies to dealing with this pandemic. Now that doesn't mean mistakes aren't going to get made. You might turn left when you're not supposed to, or you might you know not turn you can turn right at red lights or something in is that yes. correct in the yes. us right? yeah. yeah which is completely odd to somebody who's in my personal reality my my reality built on my own experience that's a very strange thing to do because it's a red light but it makes sense to the people whose reality is built around that experience um so we ha don't have a shared experience in that one but we can learn to accommodate that because fundamentally i'm still sitting in the car pushing that lever doing this and following a path on a road so that level of of <laughs> shared experience to bring the uh the 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 the, the organization's name into this <laughs> <laughs> um, that part of shared experience um uh allows us to form a pattern to predict what's going to happen next and in fact if you just see somebody doing it a couple of times which is how i learned when I did it, I kind of went, uh, somebody bibbed me. I think the first time somebody honked their horn at me and I was going, what? It's a red light. And, and then I saw somebody been really annoying the person behind me. Yeah. Um, and, um, uh, and then I saw other people doing it. And I thought, okay, you can do this. And then my brain went through the pattern of who has right of way, what the logic would be in the flows and da, 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 da. And I worked out, well, okay, that means that I could do that safely. Right. Okay. I will follow that. Um, so you can work it out and the same applies to how you deal with this pandemic mistakes will be made you'll get honked a couple of times um you'll, you'll stop <laughs> in the wrong places <laughs> and you might pull into traffic occasionally but you can work it out and basically the similar basic rules apply you don't do something completely reckless you know not to pull out straight into traffic you know to slow down at a junction you know to do certain things from driving and you know the patterns that apply to that you could jump into a you know, an automatic or a manual or a, or a, or any type of car, I might be slightly different on that because I grew up in the car trade, so I drove loads of cars. But mm. I can jump into almost any car and just go right. Okay, well the lights are going to be around here somewhere, and they're going to do, or they're going to be on the stick, or the, on, the, on the indicators, or they're going to be on a branch, or they'll be down there, or they'll be there, or you pull that. There's only a, a fixed number of variables that it could possibly be. Mm. It's not going to be something completely unpredictable. And, and and the COVID situation is the same. There's only a fixed number of variables it can possibly be. Um, and as long as we understand to learn from those experiences, as long as you, you kind of go, well, what about if we try this? Well, that didn't work. What about if we try that? That didn't work. Mm. So, well, uh, I this mean... isn't necessarily the deja vu thing. It sort of is, but you learn from history and you gain, you learn the patterns to, to, to replicate as you would any, any kind of problem, dealing with any kind of problem. You know, you look at experience and you see, how do I deal with that? Well, but I think that, that but but your your example of the driving in a foreign country, I think, is a really interesting one because I was gonna sort of put this out there to say, you know, you don't you don't know what you don't see. So, for example, 
you can come into a familiar environment, which is a car, and you can start driving the way you've been driving at home. Now, you know you're driving on a different side of the road, so you are making some adjustments, but there's a lot of blind spots you don't know that you have because you just aren't aware of it. And people who are sitting there in the car with you who do come from that country may be seeing things you're not seeing and going, ah, you know, look out for that, look out for that. Now, you think to yourself, why not drive a car? Stop giving me such a hard time. But the truth is, sometimes you don't have the humility to see what you don't see or to understand that there are things you don't see. And that if you have humility, you can learn from because you can go, oh, gosh, I see. I didn't know this person was merging in this lane in that way because I was looking somewhere else because I'm just so conditioned to look this other way because of where where I grew up. So mm-hmm. I feel that um, that in this pandemic, for example, uh, th- there are times for humility, such as, you know, we make certain assumptions. Uh, we made the assumption that this is like the influenza virus. So by making that assumption, we assume that if you survive it, you have some immunity for a little while, and then maybe, you know, come another season, you you don't, but it's not a, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's something that, you know, is bad for some people, but most people just kind of get over and it's fine. Now, if that, all that may be true, if you, if the assumption is correct, that it is like a, just a more virulent, virulent form or communicable form of influenza, but what if it isn't? What if it's something that lives in your system forever, like uh, malaria or herpes or, you know, something else or HIV, and therefore, you know, getting it is problematic because it hides in other organs of your body and comes out, you know, various times to, to, to make your life miserable. So in that case, you would then sort of readjust your behavior because you'd say, well, I really don't want to get this thing, you know, because getting it once doesn't really confirm the kind of uh, immunity that I would like to have. So... The assumptions we make are are obviously based on a sort of life experience, but we need to sort of have a little bit of humility to say, gosh, you know, what can I learn from history? What do I not see? What am I completely blind to? Because because I take these things for granted or assume that this thing is like some other thing. And um and I guess, you know, that's that's sort of what I was hinting at. But I like your 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 um car analogy because mm-hmm. I think it is a situation where we, if we know how to drive, we say, it's a car. I know how to drive. What, how, how bad could it be? How different could it be? And then you get in a car accident. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm bringing up another one, which is what if we could do a do over? Um, and then finally, I'll just bring this into the same time just to make life a little more complicated. What if masks became status symbols? So I don't know if, uh, with a few minutes, if, uh, what, uh, what that well, inspires i i still think with the specifically talking about the covid-19 situation um i the the humility learning thing you know, the wise man knows that he knows nothing all of those kind of things mm. and i'm sure you know throughout <laughs> your career as well as mine the more i learn about things 20 years ago people were saying to me or roughly that or 15 years ago people said oh you know you're 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 an expert in in on you know digital stuff you really know your thing you know you're you're and I think the more I learn, the the less, the more I realize I haven't got a clue. You know, I, I, <laughs> I, I love I know that. a hell of a lot of stuff. But, but I learned that there is so much that I just don't know. Um, in a way, yeah. that keeps me interested. But, but from this point of view, if we could do a do-over now, I don't think we've got enough to go on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely don't. You know, I think we still, in, in a way, looking at this from a completely cold, objective, heartless point of view i i kind of think well okay let's let those people go out and do their thing i'm gonna stay at home you guys go out and do what you want to do and start doing that i'll keep an eye on you for a month and i'll reassess the situation then because we do split testing you know you know you do split testing a b testing on site on on sites and things and perform you know to do uh, uh, conversion rate optimization things like that won't get boring and technical onto that side of things but we will generally collect about three months worth of data just to, to begin to get an idea. You can do things quicker than that. But generally speaking, if you're testing two different designs to see which one performs better or something, you'll generally want at least six weeks to, to, to three months of data. And that's that's without really you know going into an in-depth side of things. And we've only really been collecting data on this for a couple of months. And we've been collecting it inconsistently. I love this. This so is a pandemic that... A/B testing. It's like, oh, <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. some so places, some yeah. countries. It's like they open up. Yeah, go for it. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll see how that is for you. And others yeah. are shut down, and we'll see what happens. 
<laughs> yeah, as, as long as we're all collecting our data in a consistent manner, then uh, that's fine. Um, <laughs> and reporting in a consistent manner. I mean, you yeah. know, I'm starting to somewhat dubious about Russia. Um, mm. It's like, well, they've got 500 cases? Really? <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, only yeah. 500 cases. Yeah. Sorry, that was the timer, but we, we, we've got a few more minutes, so keep going. Yeah, so I like, I like yeah, where so you're taking just, this. Uh, part of me, from a cold, objective data collection point of view, thinks, yeah, let's collect a bit more of that. Let's get those people out. Variant A, we'll put them out there. <laughs> Let them go out without their masks. Let them go and gather in, in, in social parties. And that. Yeah, they can wear the red tops from Star Trek. Um, you know, they can, <laughs> uh, and we can just sort of watch yeah. them and see what happens. So now, here, here, here in this country, that variant A is meatpacking and nursing homes, right? So it's like you know, that's variant A. Let's see what that how that works out, and then uh, uh, we'll we'll do variant B, which is shut in. You know, unfortunately, I don't. I, don't actually, I should add to this. I don't actually think it's a good idea to do that. But <laughs> if it's going to happen, we might as well collect the data on it and 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 use it to it's make said like a true data it. scientist. <laughs> yeah. <that's> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no harm in looking at the numbers. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's do a data-driven uh, yeah. model here. You know, yeah. So I don't think we, I don't think we have enough to go back and do a do, do over at this point. Before we go back to our deja vu moment, I think we need to um, to well, hang around a little bit before we get to the DeLorean. I'm going to throw in a little spanner in the works there and say, "Hello, hello, 1918." I mean, that is this is a do over. You know, we we did this in 1918. And we're getting a do-over, and it seems like we're doing the very same things again, because I was listening to to uh, some news that said in 1918 here, where I am right now in San Francisco, we had protesters protesting the use of masks and being shut in at home, and one of them sent a homemade explosive to an to a government institution in protest. So it's and then here on the news, I see all these characters with their machine guns standing outside, you know city halls and things and saying yeah. freedom, you know, and all this and that. So I feel like, uh, you know, this is ha- this is our do over and we're doing it the same way as we did last time, but it's more guns involved. Well, again, we don't, I mean, we, we don't know for sure if this is as deadly as, as that one. I mean, I'm playing devil's advocate here. We don't know if it's as deadly as Spanish flu. Interestingly enough, one of the things about Spanish flu is it didn't come from Spain. Do you know this? Yes, I did. Yes, I know. It's I terrible. Yeah, we yeah. call I it the- know that until recently. Um, yeah, it was the every it was the, country. The, the every country called it some other country's flu, because <laughs> as far as they were concerned, it came from someone else. <laughs> um, but we don't know that it's that deadly. Um, and again, to go back to the conversation we had earlier on, which means well, hygiene is better. Deadly. Hygiene is better today than it was then, so that that helps. And health, like medical I, I, care. You know, I, I suspect you very very carefully constructed this conversation because we go back to the thing about we have a society now that allows us to mitigate those risks. That more complex society that we had with the other post-it notes when mm. we were talking about the idea that we can take bigger risks because we can handle what comes next. We have better systems in place to fall back onto. Um, so there's a possibility that, that, as I said, to allow those people to go out and do it, well, we have more advanced healthcare. We have abilities to do that. We do have... The ability to section an area off, um, you know, I've seen Contagion, the movie. We can put a lockdown on somewhere. Um, you know, that the, we have better systems to deal with those things. That doesn't by any means mean it's perfectly okay to do them. But there are lessons to be learned from that. And we pretty much know for a fact we're going to have a second wave, you know, because that's what's going to happen with this. The question is how serious we are. People are going out again. As as one statement put it, the the reason in the UK, uh, as one person put it, um, when 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 Boris Johnson says it's okay for you to go back to work, what he means is there's room for you in intensive care. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, well, when the um, second wave comes, we all go surfing. Let's hope that we uh, <laughs> let's hope we do it better this the next time. <laughs> um, Riding the second wave. <laughs> actually, you know what? That there's a there's a yeah there's a there's an expression which I came across yesterday called doom surfing and maybe that's doom scrolling or doom surfing that's the second wave that's what's going to happen to all of us anyway listen man it's been great and i'm sorry i have to cut it short because we've we i know we've our time is up and and i want to do this again so let me let let's let's continue the conversation in the near future it's it's been great to see you again 
yeah, nice to see you too, David. So yeah, hopefully catch up again in the near soon. In the near soon. In the near, in the near soon. In the near soon. Yeah. I like that. In the near in the soon. Near Thank you, you can mate. Deja vu that. <laughs> All right, take care. All right. You too. <laughs>